Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to VR Roundup, episode 10 on what else but a gaming Friday. Probably one of the better gaming Fridays in a long time, guys. Not only is it just freaking awesome to be a gamer in 2017, think about it. Emulation and old consoles allow you to play the classics. You can purchase or build your own arcade cabinet. We've got virtual reality gaming. We've got augmented reality starting to break in. And good old gaming, just in terms of on a monitor, not going anywhere. Lots of choices there. Several consoles on the market. A PC gaming market that is doing really freaking strong. Tabletop, board games, RPGs, man, it just doesn't end. There is gaming all over the place. 2017, again, we're just fortunate to be alive and experience this time. But we're here for VR. We're going to chat about Skyrim. going to start the episode off with Skyrim. We're going to end things there. Little editorial, some of my thoughts on things like locomotion. But we'll get to that. Let's start off with Skyrim. So here we are, guys. Release day for Skyrim, PlayStation VR. Reviews fairly positive about a lot of the aspects. There's some negatives, but again, we're going to touch on those as well uh, at the end of the episode. One thing definitely we can talk about right now, though, is that the game has taken a small step back in terms of graphics. Definitely a step back from the non-PlayStation VR version, even on PS4. Okay, maybe not that much of a step back, but it's definitely noticeable. However, with that said, you're getting a game, guys, that even without DLC offers a lot of completionist playtime. Dozens of hours. Sure, you can finish the main storyline in, you know, six, seven, eight hours easily without cheats. It's going off the beaten path, the myriad of dungeons and locations peppered around the landscape. If you like open world and straying from the beaten path, this is that game. And that's really where the series, the Elder Scrolls series shines and always has is in terms of being open world. Now, GTA gets a lot of credit for initiating open world, or so they say, but open world has been around for a long time, a lot longer than GTA has, starting with games like Elite, which itself, based on flight simulators, a lot of which really didn't have set boundaries. Now, there have been other games and series doing open world. You could argue a lot of game series that didn't require sequential play. For example, Might and Magic and the Ultima series, they were open world. In terms of first person, though, you could make a really good argument that Elder Scrolls has been doing it the longest, and they probably did it the earliest in terms of, again, first person. They've been doing it since the early 90s. I remember Exidy and myself having so much fun with Daggerfall, just breaking into shops and houses. I know that sounds extremely sleazy and scummy, but it's fantasy roleplay. You do things in fantasy roleplay you wouldn't condone necessarily or do in real life. And just that little bit of realism, even though the game is laughably pixelicious now back then in VGA though it was amazingly real and the break-ins were something no other games allowed you to do just really really good memories with that so yeah if you purchased Skyrim for PlayStation VR let me know your thoughts on it guys and again more on it at the end of the show Next up, speaking of PlayStation VR, the PlayStation VR Doom VFR bundle, it's going to be available December 1st. It's not going to include the Move controllers, but it will include the newer CUH ZVR2 head-mounted display. That's the newer PlayStation VR head-mounted display. Pre-orders for this are up on Amazon. Speaking of Amazon... We mentioned the Doom Bundle available via Amazon. Well, PlayStation VR currently the top seller on Amazon's Black Friday sales list. That is a fantastic sign for virtual reality as a whole. When I say top spot, I'm not just talking PC and video games category, but the site as a whole. PlayStation VR, number one. 
Increase in sales, guys, 46,700% increase, rising 467 places in the sales chart. Well done. In the last episode of VR Roundup, we talked about a VR stage of Street Fighter 2 playable for those attending the upcoming Red Bull Street Fighter 5 tournament. Just a little update on this, it's essentially going to be a VR version of the car smashing scene in Street Fighter 2. While it's a simulator, you're not gonna be taught how to dish out pain with any type of dish dish moves. Dish dish, dish dish. However, it is a neat gimmick, but unfortunately that's all it appears to be. Still, the prize of a Street Fighter V arcade cabinet, guys, definitely one worth fighting for. Dish, dish, dish. And this next story, HTC announcing this week that the Vive Tracker, finally available for consumers. It's the same version as devs have had access to these past months. You can purchase the tracker on its own for $99 US or as part of a bundle. There's several bundled options available. Personally, I like the Hyper Blast set, which includes a very NES retro looking light gun, which makes sense given you also get a copy of Duck Season in that bundle. There's also various tennis racket bundles that are available, which you can check out via the Vive store if you want to see everything that's available. And next up, mixing your bevies of choice with fishing, probably not always the smartest move. However, Monster Deep Final Fantasy 15 does give you a safer fishing option. I know I've been a little hard on this VR minigame over the last few months, but... According to Upload VR's update on the game, they have, to their credit, added quite a bit of gameplay to ensure the title doesn't offer more than just line in water, line out of water. The water portions are actually worthy of being a decently good fishing experience. In the game, you can customize your gear and fish in various locations. Your objective to get rid of all the underwater monsters lurking in the various areas. Now, according to these guys, I haven't tried it myself, but according to them, the mini game centered around a full RPG offers a better fishing experience than the standalone PlayStation VR fishing game called Fishing Master. Again, that's a dedicated fishing title. So if Squeenix is considered the more compelling of the two, plus the additional stuff they've thrown in, maybe just maybe worth a second look. Crytek has some amazing virtual reality experiences out there. They've got the climb, which if you're into rock climbing, or even if you're not, if you've got a fear of heights, definitely a title I recommend, as well as Robinson the Journey, two decent virtual reality games. Well, some ex Crytek employees working under developer PlaySnack have been working on a game called Shaman, or Shaman, whichever you prefer, Spirit Hunter. It's going to be coming to the Rift in 2018. Has a bit of a Skyrim, speaking of Skyrim, vibe to it. Just kind of that look and feel. You play the part of a Shaman. The game is equal parts stealth, puzzle, and action. In addition to those play styles, the view switches at times between first and third person. For example, there are stealth segments that... You can use a third-person Metal Gear style gameplay for. And then there's first person when you're doing stuff using the bow for hunting sequences. The main gameplay mechanic, however, your ability to shapeshift. That's used throughout the game where you switch between human and various animal shapes. The game coming to Rift 2018. And wanted to end tonight's video with a bit of an editorial is actually one where I benefit from time travel. This is actually my second go if you're watching this. The first video uh, was a confusing mess. It sounded, and I admit it does sound that way. You can check it out in the description below. I've just unlisted it, haven't deleted it. Like I'm saying that the Move controllers have no locomotion capability for Skyrim. That's not true. It's not what I was saying. We'll get into what I was saying. I'll be clear on that in this video, but because I have the benefit of hindsight, having read some of the comments, I'm just going to address that here in the editorial as well. The completion time that I talked about in the first story leading into tonight's VR roundup. 
What I was referring to is main quest completion, not completionist completion. There's two ways to complete Skyrim. You can rush through the main storyline or you can complete all the quests. Completing all the quests, probably around 120 to 150 hours minimum. Rushing through the main storyline, 6 to 12 hours is about what it takes you. Developers can do it in about four. Speedrunners, albeit with exploits, in about, I think the record is 27 minutes or 28 minutes. But yeah, if you, and I got the game, the collector's edition, when it came out, I was in the midnight lineup with my daughter, uh, got the Skyrim Dragon still from it, 500 plus hours played, but my first go with Elder Scrolls traditionally is not a speed run, but just a do the main storyline, nothing else, and see how long it takes. And it was about 10 hours. So rest assured, most people, you're going to do the main quest, then you get to branching quest, you're going to branch off somewhere, probably something that sounds interesting. And it's kind of like the dog seeing the squirrel, you go off the beaten path. And before you know it, you're 30, 40, 50 hours into the game. So rest assured, there is a hell of a lot to do in Skyrim, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. So just because I say 6 to 10, that is, again, purposely plowing through the game. Let's talk locomotion. The Vive controller and the Oculus Touch controller, the one benefit they have are built-in analog locomotion controls. When you're using them for virtual reality, you can benefit on the Vive from the trackpad. If you're using it in games like Onward, other games, or on the Oculus Touch, you can benefit from the analog nub. Functions very much the same as the trackpad. Even the du uh, DualShock 4 has dual analogs. The PlayStation Move controller, however, and that was the point that I made so poorly in the first editorial, has only buttons. It has a trigger on the back, four buttons, your typical triangle, circle, square, X, a PlayStation Move control, and we'll get to that one because that's actually one that you use in Skyrim, and then of course your PlayStation Home style button. So in game, you can use the move controllers in two ways. You can use it to teleport, which I didn't like. It's a very short teleportation and the teleportation is stamina based. So in an open world game, it feels very limiting in terms of how far you can teleport and how fast you can do that. To me, it doesn't feel like it was balanced correctly, but I could be incorrect on that. The other way you can use it is you can change it to direct movement and then what happens is the move button becomes your move forward button. There's some limited movement that you can do with the controller to go kind of angle and you can do turning by degrees as well. When you get to stuff like combat, it does tend to get a little muddled, at least it did for me. and. Maybe you guys are way more adept at using those. But for me, the DualShock 4 with those default locomotion controls just felt better. It felt more natural. Even though I love motion controllers, I've said it before and I always say it, the right controllers for the right task. And my main point is simply, I don't feel the PlayStation Move controllers are the correct controllers for the task. I think the DualShock 4 overall does a better job of it. Even though I love the idea that you can swing an ax, the limitations inherent in the PlayStation Move controller just don't add up to the full experience. And you're making compromises that to me are too much of a compromise to make the whole feel comfortable. So that's kind of where I was at with it. That should make a lot more sense than the first time around. Uh, if you're one of the 400 that watched it the first go, my apologies, guys. Uh, I give you this in its stead. And now I am off to bed. It is late. And Epix is tired. Guys, have a terrific whatever's left of your Gaming Friday. A kick-arse weekend. I realize I don't even have a bevy. 
So I'm just going to do a verbal cheers, a kick-arse weekend, and we will catch you guys Tuesday. Cheers, guys.